The Ontario government has introduced a bill to regulate the selling of electronic cigarettes. If the bill passes, e-cigarettes will be banned in all of the same places where regular cigarettes are prohibited. Joining us now for more on the developments, Mark Holland, now Executive Director for the Ontario Mission of the Heart and Stroke Foundation, and David Sweener, Adjunct Professor of Law at the University of Ottawa, and we're happy to have you two gentlemen in our studio today. Let's just, for the purposes of clarification, uh, show some of the bullet points, Sheldon, if you would, of the Making Healthier Choices Act. Here's what's in it. Banning the sale and supply of e-cigarettes to anyone under the age of 19. Prohibit the use of e-cigarettes in certain places where the smoking of tobacco is prohibited. Ban the sale of e-cigarettes in certain places where the sale of tobacco is prohibited. Prohibit the display and promotion of e-cigarettes in places where e-cigarettes or tobacco products are sold or offered for sale. Ban the sale of flavored tobacco products with a delayed implementation date for menthol-flavored tobacco products. That's all part of Bill 162, the so-called Making Healthier Choices Act. Okay, Mark Holland, is the government taking the right steps with this proposed legislation? Uh, we feel yes. Uh, on e-cigarettes specifically, uh, really this has been something that's been exploding over the last while. Uh, and the research is uh, emerging. Uh, we don't know a lot yet about, uh, about how safe it is or how effective it is as a cessation tool. And so we don't really have a lot of comment on whether or not somebody should or shouldn't uh, use it as a way to quit smoking. But we are seeing a lot of young people starting this up who are not smokers. And, you know, I don't know about you, Steve, but when I'm out um, and about and I suddenly see somebody uh, puffing on, uh, on something that looks like a cigarette in a public space, that's very jarring. And we're worried about renormalizing that behavior. Right now we have about 18% of uh, youth who are not smokers using these products. We're concerned this is going to lead to renormalization. This is going to lead to uh, youth uh, potentially addicting themselves to a, a harmful product because these products often still have nicotine. David Sweener. Yeah, well, um, a very different view on this. I mean, I, I've spent over 30 years dealing with smoking. Uh, as a smoker, what, you mean? No, <laughs> as, as one of the leading advocates in this country on, on what do we do to reduce uh, cigarette smoking. So everything from the, the ad bans to smoke-free spaces to tobacco taxes. Uh, and one of the really key things is that to date we haven't dealt with the product itself. We haven't dealt with cigarettes. Cigarettes are an incredibly deadly delivery system. The reason people get sick isn't because of the nicotine, it's because of the smoke. You suck smoke into your lungs, darn good chance it's going to kill you. What we know from the scientists who are you know, leading the, uh, the, the work in the area of electronic cigarettes and the, the new generation products is that they are going to be massively less hazardous because it's not just that cigarettes kill, we know why they kill. And if you can deliver nicotine without those toxins, you can do something that can save a tremendous number of lives. You got one on you? I do indeed. So that when you look at the sorts of products that are, that are coming out now, this is sort of a... Uh, one that I picked up while I was at a meeting of the, uh, the Royal Society in London a couple of weeks ago. Uh, these are the sorts of products that are, that are now being used by a tremendous number of smokers. Uh, data just came out uh, this morning from, uh, from the States looking at uh, what's happened to the sales of these products. Uh, and sales are up in the last month 55%. Uh, the data from the UK is showing that roughly 2 million smokers in that country have now started using electronic cigarettes and 700,000 of them have totally quit smoking. I mean, from a health standpoint, that sort of thing's a major breakthrough. Mark, do you want to comment on that? Well, I mean, I think the problem with e-cigarettes is that for every study that says that, you know, it might be an effective tool of cessation, there are other studies that say um, it's leading to dual usage, um, that there are potentially harmful effects of using it. Uh, dual usage a, meaning what? Well, so that they're going to use cigarettes and they're going to use uh, an e-cigarette, that the um, instead of leading cessation, it's leading them to sort of, uh, sort of supplement one with the other so they're not smoking as much, but they're using this product. We don't know... Um, in terms of the data on how safe they are, there's a lot of conflicting data about uh, what, what the, uh, whether or not there are carcinogens in this, a number of yeah. studies suggesting that might be present. We also know from a cardiac perspective, from a perspective of heart and stroke, uh, that nicotine is something that is, uh, is not good for the heart. We don't know what the impact of secondhand vaping is. Um, and, and I think, you know, as well, most importantly, is this legislation doesn't ban it. 
right? We're not talking about a ban. If you're an adult and you want to try this as a cessation tool, our guidance as the heart and stroke is we don't know how effective it is. It might be dangerous. It might be effective. Let's wait for the research. But let's not get kids addicted to this, particularly kids who don't even use tobacco. Uh, and let's make sure that we don't renormalize walking around in public spaces okay, and see people laughing. You've, you've made that argument about renormalizing right. or, or having it be kind of a gateway thing right. for kids. Could you speak to those issues? Sure. I mean, and, and also in terms of research, I mean, there's some very, very good research on this topic, and there are some terrific scientists who, who have looked at this in detail, and they fundamentally disagree with the sorts of things that, that Mark is saying. There's a lot of, I think, fear-mongering. There, there's concerns of what if, but there's no question that this is massively less hazardous. Uh, we know that, you know, same as using nicotine replacement products, massively less hazardous. Okay, less hazardous, that. but do we want, I mean, his question is, yep. do we really want to, quote, unquote, renormalize the behavior of smoking when we've right. spent the last 25, 30, 35 years trying to get people to regard smokers well, as pariahs? Yes, but see, that's a hypothesis, is that this would somehow renormalize smoking. You know, the, the view of others, including the economists, is does exactly the opposite. It denormalizes smoking. So that you get to the point that people like Professor Robert West uh, at University College London is saying that basically if you're a smoker and you're still smoking cigarettes, that's just stupid because now there's a product that's massively less hazardous. So it's like driving around in a 62 Corvair when you could have a modern Volvo. Why would you do that? It's like finding a way to get a dirty needle to stick into your arm instead of a clean one. Okay. I, I think the problem, Steve, is that you, we don't know. I mean, this is a very new product. It emerged out of, uh, of China. It's totally unregulated in Canada. It exists in a gray zone. So we don't, there's no controls over what actually people are smoking in these, in these products. But then, Mark, uh, isn't the goal is, that we should look at how do we regulate it to do the best well, think, we can uh, to help public health? Right. And so what rather we're than saying, saying and, and I don't disagree. And so what we're saying is, is, is a couple of things. First of all, absolutely, Health Canada needs regulation so that we know what the heck are in these things. And so so, and if there is, if there's, there should be control around nicotine. Um, and right now, uh, although Health Canada says it's illegal, it's not enforced. It's in a gray zone. The third point, and I, and I think this is the most important one, is until we're certain on the science. Um, you know, we've made huge gains in tobacco control. We went from 50% prevalence of smoking in 1965, 50 years ago, down to 16% today. Now, if we are going to suddenly allow these e-cigarette devices to be all over the place and on, the, on, on extraordinary limited evidence that has only existed over the last couple of years, say, oh, no, no, it's all okay to have these devices everywhere, that's a massive risk. Well, we so we're saying, let's, let's be careful. Let's, well, let's, let's be clear. Are we arguing that this is good for you? No, absolutely not. I mean, this is... You know, when we talk about all sorts of issues in terms of risk reduction, you know, whether you're driving a car, whether you're having sex with strangers, whether you're uh, uh, dealing with, with any sort of drug, there's risks. We don't get really concerned about caffeine because people drink it. If they smoked tea leaves to get it, that would be killing people. We know what kills people. It's the smoke. So there really isn't a scientific question about how much that, whether this is less hazardous. There's a question of is what, it 98 percent, 99 percent? What do they put in there? So in something like this, all you have is propellant, which is the same sort of propellant that in, in many of the devices that we'd be using for things like an asthma inhaler uh, and nicotine and flavorants. Uh, and all of those things, you know, there's questions that would come up to say, you know, is it safe? Nothing safe. Is it going to be less hazardous? Well, let's take the, the comparator, because if we say, let's not offer this to smokers until we know for sure that it's like 99 percent less hazardous rather than, say, 98 we know for sure that based on our current trends in consumption, if we continue to do exactly the things we're doing right now, in the next 25 years, another million Canadians are going to die as a direct result of smoking. So, They're all already smoking. If we don't do, and most of them are saying, I don't want to smoke. But we mm -hmm. know enough about genetics. We know enough about neuroscience. We know about, enough about self-medication. Well, they smoke they are going to use the nicotine. They're, they're, they smoke in part because they're addicted to what the tobacco companies put in cigarettes to well, make them they're, addictive. Which is they're the addicted same, to nicotine. Is the yes. same substance in that so thing. So you're that. getting the nicotine without all the toxins. But let's, but let's hold on. Okay. I mean, the, the, the Japanese Ministry of Health just commissioned a study that said uh, that, said that uh, they found 10 times the carcinogens uh, in e-cigarettes is in, is in normal no, no, cigarettes. No, 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 Mark. You, that you, came out you last know, week. Yes. I, I think you should actually read the study. Is, I have. And, no, I, and, and you is, should is understand this. My point is, is that in, 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 the, in the couple of years that e-cigarettes have been around, there are a lot of outstanding questions. Now, we agree on something that's extremely important. We need to get people to stop smoking cigarettes. What we don't agree on is, is that there is a very limited base of science. Uh, there is all kinds of questions around the, the, the safety, safety and efficacy of e-cigarettes, whether or not they even work as a okay. cessation tool. But, is, but, but 
let's take a pause and let's not allow this to explode into something that's majorly used and then all of a sudden we realize it's a huge problem and we can't go backwards and reverse it. Potentially though, is this potentially a way station for some people from smoking a pack or two a day and some people just can't, they just can't cold turkey, right? Or they can't quit or the patch doesn't work or whatever. Is this a way station to get them eventually to quit? Right. It? And I think that's a key point, Steve. And that's why we say there's nothing in this bill that bans it. There's nothing that stops an adult who wants to use this as a cessation tool and take a chance. But it does make it much harder for them to do it. No, and it doesn't. I mean, look, the well, reality is you can, you for, can do it at home. It just means that you can't go out into well, a restaurant or a public space and do it. But if you're an adult, it can buy it. Yes, it's going to make it harder for yeah, youth. It's going to but make as it, I said, it's going to make it harder for anyone. 18% of non smoking youth. These are in high school kids yeah, that, who are now using e-cigarettes, who don't smoke tobacco, who are now on a, a nicotine product when and they weren't before. it would be very interesting to see that study. Of those, that, okay, so but, but as long, presumably as long as we prevent the sale of these yeah, things we, to, to kids under 19. You've done point, a very good okay. job right. at yeah. being able to prevent the sale of cigarettes to kids. I mean, it was 42% smoking prevalence among 15 to 19 year olds when I got involved in dealing with this issue. I mean, that is just absolutely plummeted. The question is, out of fear of kids, do we, instead of saying things like, let's do something to protect minors, mm -hmm. we do something to say, let's screw smokers. Let's make it harder for them to be able to quit. Because everything that we do that makes it harder for somebody to use something like this or use nicotine replacement therapy is something that makes it easier for people to continue smoking, and that increases the death rate. So how do we come up with an intelligent policy based on good science that moves people as far down that continuum of risk as we can. Well, does this Ontario bill, in, in your view, is this good public policy? I think if, if you wanted to support the cigarette business, this is a really good idea. Because if you look at things like, what is going to happen when you say, a product like this, you would not be able to even see it at retail. You would not be able to handle it if you were a consumer. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea for cigarettes. But Steve, if you were a smoker, and I said, you know, what you should do is get one of these devices, this is like going to a store to ask about a cell phone. It isn't like going to buy cigarettes. Where do you get those? Uh, this, this one's from the UK, but you can buy them in vape shops here uh, now. But if you go into a vape shop, you'll see people who are, they're trying different devices, you know, just like you try a different cell phone or a different pair of running shoes. Somebody's showing them how to use it. That would be bad. They Martin, wouldn't even no, be able the, to see the, them. The best Martin. analogy, Steve, I can make is, um, you know, we remember when uh, we thought uh, there was some, uh, you know, a revolutionary new treatment for MS. There was a real rush without research um, to say, make this available, fund it. It's, you know, and it was based on very limited science and there was a rush and of course we ended up finding out that it wasn't the revelation that we thought it was and it had all kinds of additional harm. All we're saying is until we have rock solid science, and, and I think smoking. that's absolutely not. The that's case. what you're well, saying. First of all, the Heart and Stroke Foundation, the Heart and Stroke Foundation, Canadian Cancer, and other organizations have been on the vanguard, along with yourself, <laughs> in driving down. Well, I wouldn't say vanguard down, for some of them, but well, I mean, I mean yeah, you'd be shall. argumentative. Let, 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 had, let's, yeah. let's be we've real sure, here. We've, yeah. had, we've had remarkable. These organizations success. don't condone smoking. They don't no, want people we to smoke. We want. Well, they were not nearly as supportive as they should have been in many of the things we were doing. I mean, come on. I mean, now we're. Getting, so, now we're just getting silly. Look, no, the reality I'm very is willing to talk our, about it our mission, I was our there. mission okay. is to get as close to zero as possible in smoking. We want no one to smoke. Uh, we invest an enormous amount in, in trying to prevent people from smoking. It's the leading cause of preventable disease and illness in this, in this country. Um, and, and of course we want people to stop. And we want anything that's effective as, uh, uh, in terms of cessation. Uh, we have led with the Ottawa model out of the Ottawa Heart Institute in, in leading in cessation models. Uh, we're working with the province of Ontario improving Ontario's cessation system. Um, we, we absolutely want to see us do better, but we're a science-based organization, and the reality is these things have only been out for a couple of years. And the idea that in a couple of years we know all the implications of, of this system, both in terms of the propellant that's being used, the fact there's no regulations of them, the fact that nicotine is both in the Okay, it, it, I got you. Vapor. David, is that, not, is that no. not a reasonable concern? Well, the question is, when do you know enough to act? Well, do you know enough after yeah. two years? We cer well, it's been more than two years, and we certainly know enough. So if we look at, again, the UK, which has the best research on this, and a tremendous number of leading scientists who have said, undoubtedly, massively less hazardous. The sort of products that we have now, they're saying one of the problems is it's, they're only acceptable to about a third of smokers. And only about a third of the smokers who use them end up totally quitting smoking in a short period of time. But you're talking about, well, that's 11% of smokers. That's better than anything else we have on offer. But again, the technology keeps getting better so that if we allow these things on the market, then just like cell phones, you think of, you know, what did we start with 20 years ago compared no, to what I, we I have now? I get you, but do you, are, is there anywhere in your argument where you're concerned that some people who might otherwise not engage in this thing 
might start because of the simplicity of this device? Uh, I mean, to, to date, the evidence from the UK, which is the strongest, uh, is showing virtually nobody who is a non-smoker is using these things. The only people who are using them, uh, and I think the most recent UK data, uh, and it's very thorough, unlike many of the studies that, that are, are talked about here, is saying 0.14% of the use is among people who are never smokers. Well, that's still a concern, and we want to deal with that. But that's like saying, should we say that until you can prove that seat belts and airbags and crumple zones and something don't injure somebody, should we make sure that we don't have any auto safety features? Mm -hmm. You know, that was saying. a great harm reduction measure. We reduced the death rate by over 80% automobile dr driving since so the time let, I was don't I let was perfection teenager. be the enemy of the good. Yeah, yeah but let's Steve, start moving on this. What can we do when we're talking about a million deaths in here's the next exactly 20 years? Here's exactly what we can do. And it's in Heart and Stroke, Canadian Cancer Society, the Ontario Medical Association, Not Smokers Rights, um, the Ontario Campaign for Action on Tobacco, all speak with a united voice on this point. Um, that we don't know whether or not this is a good cessation tool and we don't know whether or not it's safe. If you want to quit smoking, call the, uh, call the smoker's helpline. We have all kinds of cessation okay. to tools. To be clear though, Mark, you, you're, not, you're not for banning these no, things. No, and that's, and that's where we don't want to get, we, we, this is not where we want the argument to go okay. because I think it obfuscates the main point, which is that we don't know. And if it turns out in the future uh, that e-cigarettes are an effective use of, uh, a tool for cessation, we will absolutely advocate them. We just do not know that today. And secondly, there are, um, there's a real risk in allowing their use to be all over the place. I've got to ask, what's your interest in this? Public health. I mean, I've spent over 30 years doing work to reduce smoking. Um, you know, I don't get paid by anybody on any side of any of this stuff. Uh, but we have the opportunity. And when we look at the World Health Organization telling us this century, a billion people are going to die as a direct result of cigarette smoking. We have known for decades, they smoke for the nicotine, they die from the smoke. If you can remove the smoke from that equation, we can do something that's on par with getting rid of smallpox. You know, we have the chance of a breakthrough of absolutely enormous historical significance. If we stand in the way of that, if we say, what about, or if we're very risk averse, we're stuck with that status quo. We're stuck with that over 40,000 Canadians per year who are dying from smoking Gentlemen, because of the smoke, not the nicotine. My status quo is that every hour has 60 minutes and we're <laughs> rapidly running out of them. Thank you very much for coming in and having the debate at TVO tonight. David Sweener, the University of Ottawa, Mark Holland, Heart and Stroke Foundation. My thanks to you both. Thank you. Good talking to you, Steve. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.